Hi, this is Lucian Miller from Innovative Designs and uh, we've had a lot of requests from our customers about putting together some videos that show how to do common maintenance items on the Scorpion motors uh, and speed controllers and things like that. So what we're doing here today is we're going to uh, produce a little video that shows how to change a shaft in a motor. And to do that we're going to be using a uh, Scorpion HK4035 helicopter motor that we're going to put a new shaft in. So. Uh, just sit back and watch and you'll figure out how to do it. When you uh, go to take apart uh, a helicopter motor, there's a, a little C-clip right here that holds the shaft in place. And there's a couple of different styles. Uh, the newer ones have this type of a C-clip that have the little holes in them. Uh, and the older ones just have a couple of little notches. But uh, in order to remove the C-clips, you need a pair of C-clip pliers. And this particular pair uh, I picked up at Harbor Freight. You can get a whole set of four of these little things. Um, you can see them all right here for like six bucks you know, at, Har at Harbor Freight. I like using the one with a little angled head right there because it works really well for getting in next to the shafts. And so what you want to do is come on in here and grab in the little grooves and just spring that little clip open and remove it and set it aside and then the next thing you'll have is a little washer here that's underneath the clip and then that comes off. Now once you've removed that clip the motor comes apart. Now the way that you're going to want to pull the motor apart is to grab this uh, rotating part of the motor with one hand and grab hold of the gold end here with the other hand and just pull the two halves apart. Now make sure you have a really strong grip on this because these magnets are really strong and once you've done that, now we've got the motor separated into its two parts. The stator section, which contains the bearings, and the rotor section, which contains the magnets. And uh, now that we've got it apart, we can put it in the press and pull the shaft out. Once you've taken the motor apart, the next thing you have to do to remove the shaft is to take the two set screws out that hold the uh, uh, shaft uh, to lock it in place in the motor. So I. Uh, yeah, on this particular motor, it takes a two millimeter Allen wrench. So you come in here and make sure your Allen wrench fits in this hole real tight. And then you'll want to unscrew the two uh, set screws and remove them from the motor. So there's one on that side of the motor. And then there's another one right here on the other side of the motor. And we'll take both of those out and set them aside. And now that uh, we've got the clips and the set screws out, we're ready to put the, uh, the motor into the press to push the shaft out. To remove the shaft from the motor, uh, the best tool to use is an arbor press. This is a one ton arbor press. Again, you can pick these up from any major tool supply company. I got this one on sale at Harbor Freight for I think it was $49 or something like that. It does a great job uh, and gives you the amount of pressure that you need to push these shafts out. The shafts in the Scorpion motors are a press fit into the motor housing. It's not just a simple slip fit. Once you take the set screws out, this shaft is still going to be locked firmly in place and it takes a pretty good amount of force to press it out. So what we're going to do is we're going to set the, uh, the motor housing in the press so that the shaft is centered under the anvil in the press here. And then you're, you're going to want to press the shaft out with a piece of material that's a little bit smaller in diameter than the shaft. This is uh, the end of a screwdriver blade that I cut off. It's seven millimeters in diameter where the shaft is eight millimeters in diameter so I've got plenty of room to get in here. So I'm going to set that on top of the shaft like that so it's nice and centered and then have the uh, press ready to go. Now since I don't have this bolted down I'm going to have to get up and hold it down but what you do is you apply the pressure on the shaft like that and it slides right on through and then you have the shaft come right out of the motor like that. And now this can be set aside and we can get ready to put the new shaft in. Okay, now that we've got the old shaft taken out, it's time to put the new one in. Here I have my new shaft that I've taken out of the package already. And before you go to put the shaft in, you'll always want to put a little bit of oil on the shaft, a nice lightweight machining oil. And what this does is it prevents the aluminum 
that the uh, housing's made out of from galling against the the steel and, and causing it to uh, scrape some of the aluminum out of the pla out of place. Now, if you'll notice, there's a small flat right here on the shaft, and you need to line that flat up with one of the holes on the uh, housing where the set screw goes. And so I'm going to line this up with that hole, make sure it's perfectly straight, and then set this down and push it down into the motor as far as I can by hand. It'll typically only go in maybe a sixteenth or an eighth of an inch, but you want to make sure that it's starting in perfectly straight, because if it's tipped at an angle, what will happen is when you go to push that shaft in, it will gouge the material away from one edge of the hole here, and then the shaft will be in crooked, and the motor will wobble, and you'll ruin the motor. Now, once we have the shaft installed in the motor, I'm going to take a little block of rubber. This, this is a, a little rubber squeegee that's used in the auto body industry, and I've modified this by drilling a couple of holes in it. But this is uh, nice for a protective uh, layer so you don't scratch your motor. So I'm going to set that down on the pl uh, plate of the arbor press and I'm going to rotate it so I'm on a solid spot here. And then we set the motor in the press and push down a little bit and then rotate the motor about a quarter turn and press again and then rotate about a quarter turn. And in doing this you make sure that if you're not pressing perfectly in the center of the anvil here that you're, you're going to be applying even pressure to the shaft to make sure it goes all the way in. Now you'll want to push the shaft in uh, about the same length that the old one was, pretty close to being flush. If you press it in a little bit too far, you know, you can always press it back a little bit like that. And now that we've got the shaft in, we need to do a test fit to see if the, the groove in the shaft is going to line up properly with the uh, uh, bearing. Now uh, most of the motors have got a little washer that goes down in first and this and what the, what this washer does is it provides a place for this inner bearing to ride on so it's not actually hitting the aluminum inside the motor so we'll slide that in there first and then we'll put the motor together now one thing to be very careful of this thing's going to want to slam together very tightly due to the magnetic strength so kind of guide it together slowly now what we're looking for here is we want to have about the thickness of the slot of shaft showing so that we, when we put this wave washer back on, it's got some room to compress. Now, right now, the way it is, the bottom of the slot's perfectly flush with the bottom of the bearing, so we need to press the shaft out just a little bit more. So we're going to run the shaft down uh, about another half a millimeter and then refit the motor and see how everything looks. And uh, pretty close there. That's looking pretty good. So now what we'll want to do is put the wave washer back on the shaft. And now I'm going to use one of the new style C-clips since that's what came with the new shaft. And again, I'm going to use my little C-clip pliers. And you put the pliers in the little holes and open that clip up a little bit. Slide it on the shaft until it drops down. And then press it until you'll hear it click into the slot. And once that's in there, your motor's all back together. Um, now that we've got the uh, motor all back together, the only thing left to do is to put the two set screws back in uh, to lock the shaft in place. Now, uh, you'll always want to put a little bit of uh, Loctite. This is a blue Loctite number 242 uh, that I like to use. You always want to make sure you shake these bottles up because the solids do settle in the Loctite. Um, the easiest way to do this is to just put your Allen set screw on the end of your tool and then just dot a little bit of Loctite on the screw. Now when you go to set this uh, set screw in place, there's two holes. Now you remember we lined that flat up with one of the holes and you always want to put the screw in the flat hole first because if that flat is not perfectly square with the relationship to the hole and when you tighten down that set screw it might rotate the shaft a little bit to uh, get it in perfect alignment so the first thing we're going to do is put this first set screw in in the hole where the uh, flat lines up and you want to snug it down nice and then we'll get the uh, second set screw here 
and I'll put it on my Allen wrench and then I'll get a little lock Loctite on it. And then we'll put that one in the other hole. Make sure that's in there nice and snug. And then to clean up any excess Loctite that oozes out, I like just using Q-tips. So you can you can reach down in there, right down in that hole like that, and you can, you know, clean any excess Loctite away that's in these holes right here. Just like that. And now we've got the motor back together, uh, shafts in place, Loctited. We got the clip in, everything's good to go. And uh, so that's how you go about changing a shaft in a Scorpion helicopter motor. Well, there you have it. We've got our motor all back together. And uh, hopefully, this video has uh, provided you with the information you need to change the shaft in your motor and uh, do it properly, get it put back together. Uh, we have a whole series of these videos that we're uh, putting together that show how to uh, change uh, bearings in motors and proper soldering techniques and other things. So be sure to check all these videos out at uh, our website at www.innovativedesigns.com. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.